Dr. Jason. Yes, uh, Beth Smith. Um, the CBT studies have been um, with patient polls, somewhat um, varied results from some of the things that were presented in more empiric uh, um, trials. I was wondering if you can comment on the tremendous discrepancy while patients are so skeptical and so um, feeling that these particular interventions are not helpful, whereas some of the literature you've reviewed suggests they are. And in addition, the cure rate is often talked about in some of those, for example, trials of CBT. And I was wondering whether you think the people are actually cured with this illness or something else is going on, which, again, some of those trials report. And finally, the methodological issues of some of the trials, like the PACE trial, of having differential standards of coming into the trial versus recovery and how those standards have changed. Are those methodological issues considered in the types of reviews that you've done? Um, real quickly for Beth Unger, could you also just mention some of the case definitions that some of the clinicians in these seven centers are possibly using to bring patients in and whether you're still using some of the operationalization of Reeves and some of the work at the CDC on this trial and possibly others. Thank you. Thank you. And, and if I can repeat, Dr. Jason, I, I understand there's three questions. The first one is um, why is it that we're seeing a benefit in the counseling and behavior therapy trials, whereas patients don't seem to sense that? Um, he asked me to address the topic of cure as well as uh, methodological issues and whether we uh, critically appraise these articles as we go through our view and address the methodological issues. So I believe I have those three uh, correct, and, and please correct me if I, if I misrepresented uh, it. Um, the first question as to why uh, benefit is noted in the, when we perform the meta-analysis or when we, we look at the trials together and yet patients don't sense that. Um, that's, that's a great question. As you can, can see, there are multiple different outcomes. Some of the uh, trials had mixed results. Some of the trials showed improvement and, and other trials showed no difference. And when we look at the, uh, the, the uh, combination of them, we did see improvement on several of the different scales. Um, why we have seen this and why the trials are showing this and yet patients don't, don't report it is, is uh, un, I'm uncertain how to, how to respond to that, um, but it is what we're seeing. I think that when, the way I look at it as a clinician is that mo many of these different approaches are geared at helping an individual um, cope, um, manage, learn to tolerate with a chronic illness. And, and across the spectrum of diseases and chronic diseases, um, we have seen that, that different forms of counseling and uh, other types of therapies show improvement. Uh, and that's a very different thing than an outcome of cure. And, and that really gets to the second question. And as you saw from the report today, I, I did not include the evidence on recovery. And the reason being is that I, it was very um, poorly uh, evaluated. And when it was evaluated, the outcomes that were measured uh, were uh, inconsistent and were, were flawed as far as the thresholds used for measuring recovery. There was one large trial that had, for instance, a inclusion criteria for a patient to be entered into the trial of an SF36 sub physical function subscale score of less than 60, and that's out of 100, where normal is approximately 80 to 85. They then changed that uh, criteria to less than 65 to, um, to uh, improve recruitment. Um, but when they looked at measures of recovery, they used the SF36 of greater than 60 as one of the thresholds for 
uh, one of the criteria, one of several criteria for recovery. So there's some contradictory um, contradiction in that as far as a measurement of cure and recovery. And the same could be said on, on measures of uh, fatigue, where in many uh, or in several trials earlier, uh, child or fatigue score of less than four was considered normal. And for recovery, um, in this one trial, they considered a child or fatigue <coughs> score of less than 18. Well, if you look at the normal range and then a standard deviation above that, you could get to a score of 18. Uh, but was, would that really reflect um, recovery? Um, it, it, it makes it questionable. And so um, I, I, in looking at the evidence, it was felt that recovery just really wasn't, um, but that as, a, as an outcome was not uh, well, well measured and there's too much inconsistency and I would encourage that that would be an area of future research is to try to set some standards of what is meaningful recovery, what is, what does it mean to be cured um, from this condition? And I think that question is still out there. And then finally, you asked about methodological issues. And, and yes, we very much do scrutinize the, the papers that uh, we, we review. Um, we quality rate them, and that's strictly based on methodology. And we use uh, strict critical appraisal techniques in, in order to do so. Dr. Can I just, uh, oh. may, may I um, just put in a, a thought? You know, the meta-analysis takes all the studies and, and, and looks at each one equally. But when I looked at those data, I saw them as dichotomous. I saw the UK studies, two UK studies, producing a very overwhelming positive response, which was great. But the US-based studies didn't. So there seems to be a difference between the United States and the UK, and I've asked uh, Drs. Friedberg and Jason about this, and we really don't understand, but uh, I think that that's another way to look at it. Are they successful or not, and then try to come up with reasons? Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Mitchell. Okay, the question was, what case definitions were the clinicians using? Um, did I know? And uh, in discussions with them, I know that they're using both the 1994 case definition and the 2003 Canadian case definition. Uh, we didn't ask, um, and, and I, I think in their own minds, they don't necessarily separate out perfectly. Clinical work is, uh, is guided by what the patients are more than <laughs> once, you, once you've got them in the door and are evaluating them. Um, so we collected our measures, and the instruments that we collected included the CDC symptom inventory, the MFI-20, and the SF-36, which we used um, in conjunction with extensive screening in a population-based study. And that's what Dr. Jason's referring to as operationalized. It has also been referred to as the empiric criteria, which was not a new definition, but was really um, a method to apply the 1994 case definition. Those three instruments work well in a population-based study only after extensive screening, which goes on beforehand, and then to, uh, to basically classify patients after you've removed all exclusionary conditions, including depression. Um, and so, yes, we are still using those instruments um, and uh, are looking at the best way to operationalize as, uh, uh, and determine if the patients fit a case definition. And this is a real important question because you can do these measurements and then you get into questions of a threshold is when you count a symptom, when do you say that they've met this particular criteria of, of a case definition. And it depends on how you operationalize that. And following the criteria um, uh, that was established for the 2003 case definition or has been used at least in the 2003 case definition as well as um, criteria that we used, we we found, uh, you know, we could approximate uh, the case uh, definition. And there were 11% of the patients that didn't meet either case definition. Now, I'm not going to sit here for a minute, and I have no doubt that those patients are ME-CFS. It relates to the flaws and the difficulty we have still in measuring and, uh, and applying the appropriate cutoffs. Um, and so I think this whole business of measurement uh, needs to be continued and expanded in uh, 
again, multi, um, multi clinic studies when the same instruments are applied in the same way. This um, brings up an important question in my mind. Um, the Oxford definition, um, you made a comment that you think that it may need to be retired. Does anyone disagree with that? Alrighty then. Um, 